Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. It's part of the Wildy's Legal Handbook series. I'm reviewing the others in this series, and this one is called Public International Law Before the Courts. It's been written by uh, Kawa Kuoweshi, Queen's Counsel. As I say, we've reviewed a couple of these uh, books in the series before. Elizabeth and I talked about this book, and the title we've given for our review is Superb Short Advice in the Wildy's um, a handbook uh, series covering all legal matters which involve more than one jurisdiction uh, actually now heard in England and Wales and that's basically what the book is really about. Let's have a look at the book. It's a handbook, a handbook and it's also a paperback. There's the um, it's green cover, there's the front, there's the spine, then there's information on the back. There's a picture of the author there and some basic information about the book. It's a bit heavier than some of the other books. It runs to three, just over 300 pages. There's no index or anything at the back. Uh, it, it just sort of runs out uh, at the back with um, appendices and so forth. There are shaded areas. Um, you can see that's Annex 5 there. The shaded areas will help you find things quite quickly. At the front of the book, you've got... Uh, the basic information. The book's been written uh, with assistance of uh, Catriona Nicol and Joseph Dye, uh, Dyke. Sorry. And there are two others in the series from Qureshi, uh, Bilateral um, Investment Treaty Claims, The Essentials, and Conflict of Interest in International Arbitration, both of which I've also reviewed. And as I say, it's part of the Wilder's Legal Handbook series there. Now, that's the inf general information about the um, publishers. Then there's the actual contents. There's no numbering. Um, there are chapter heads and then subheads. And then right at the end, you've got six appendices at the end of the book, uh, dealing specifically with charters, the U UN Act, and various other pieces of legislation and so forth. Lord Phillips has, of Worth My Travers has written a... A uh, short forward, which is well worth reading. And then you've got an introduction to the table of cases from various uh, places. You've also got jurisdictional immunities of states and statutes and so forth, treaties. You can see the actual case law set out there. And then you've got uh, the, the case law is set up in terms of the actual issues. And then you've got an introduction starting off. What is public international law? Well, it's not a subject area I took for my degree studies. I'm well aware of it because I, I certainly used to be known as PIL, Public International Law. It's an important area of law, but not, not for my practice personally. But I know within certainly the University of London and other universities, uh, PIL is a popular area. Uh, you'll see there's an introduction of locked out section. And then as you go through, you can find uh, what you're looking for throughout. Um, basically, no... Um, no real footnotes, there's the occasional footnote. There's no paragraph numbering or anything. And the book runs, as I say, to something like about 300 odd pages. Yes, just over 300. It's a good book, and I think a very important one, bearing in mind what we're doing at the moment within international law and the changes that are taking place, brought partly upon us, I suspect, by Brexit and the fact that in a more global world where everybody's talking to each other via the internet, uh, we are going to start needing to look again at some of the ways in which we deal with other countries. So therefore public international law will come into its own probably more in this century than it has done. Uh, but that does mean that we're going to have to have agreements on a whole range of things from trade to the internet to everything else. Let me just put that back up again because it's fallen down. There we go, it's a bit heavy. There we go, I'll just leave it there. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Now, the book. Now, what, do we, what do we say about it? Well, this is rightly described as a groundbreaking text which seeks to guide practitioners on how to spot a public international law point, a pill point, from 100 yards, basically. Now, Kawa Qureshi Queen's Council, he's a Deputy High Court Judge, uh, references throughout this book the key statutes and case law principles for what is a short title in seven main chapter headings plus the six annexes 
uh, which cover key treaties and uh, statutory provisions. He's based his work on 25 years of experience in acting for and against countries in proceedings before the English courts. And he's acted at all levels in such matters, successfully demystifying Pill for a new audience. And he shows its increasing significance in litigation in England and Wales as we enter a new era with Brexit. Can I just say here as well that um, interna- this, this is a good book for students because international law, I do think, is going to gain more emphasis, possibly. It's not a subject that was necessarily one that one would go for if you're going to go into practice uh, when I started because um, I needed to do the basic course subjects and this wasn't one of them. But I think things have changed dramatically because even in those days, <coughs> we didn't really even have... Um, EU law or EEC law, um, European law itself wasn't compulsory and uh, there wasn't even, when I started, there wasn't even a a subject um, covering it, mainly because we weren't actually members of the uh, common market at that time, so that dates me a bit. But you can see how things have changed since we became members of the old common market in 1973 and in 2017 onwards we're going to be leaving. So you can see the massive change in that particular gap of time. Lord Phillips has contributed a most concise forward, writing that the handbook enables the reader to appreciate the recent application and development of the principles of public international law in this country in the best possible way. And of course Phillips was most fortunate to have been taught by Ivor Jennings, whom some of you will know, when he was a Cambridge undergraduate. That's not Ivor Jennings, it's Lord Phillips. <coughs> Ivor Jennings being a, a very, very well-known uh, person in legal history in terms of, of his contribution to this subject at Cambridge University. And of course that was in the days when public international law was not case-heavy in any way and was probably, to be fair, viewed in a slightly different way from the way it is today. This is one of the reasons why I'm so grateful that Wildey, Simmons and Hill have taken these titles under their wing. Um, Phillips writes, the world has changed, absolutely, and we are heading for more growth in 2017. Well, I hope we are. He gives the reasons by explaining that the Lords have developed the uh, restricted theory of sovereign immunity, rendering states susceptible to suit in respect of their commercial activities, while at the same time states have become increasingly involved in commerce. That's certainly the case, and that's one of the reasons probably why we're in such a different landscape in 2017 from what we were facing in 1973 when we joined the common market. So you can see the way that the world has shifted, and it's become very global. And it's a good thing too, probably, in many people's views, and certainly mine, after the decision to leave the Um, to withdraw from the European Union, and the need to find these fabled new commercial markets to supplant European international trade, plus, of course, the juicy um, (coughs) legal squabbles which are bound to um, probably follow. Um, Now, that in itself is important because clearly, at the time that I'm recording this, we are still members of the EU, European law is now very much of a, a, a major factor in certainly legal studies at undergraduate level and of course it does permeate through with the Human Rights Act and all the other stuff very much to what our national laws and the way we do things are all about. Now whether that's going to change in the short term I doubt. In the longer term certainly there will be changes but we've got to be prepared and I think that's one of the reasons why this book is quite useful just dealing with this narrower area of international public international law. The further point I think which underlines what I'm saying is the value of the book is the reference to the European Convention on Human Rights which which Lord Phillips makes comments about. Now not necessarily everybody agrees with what Lord Phillips says about certain things including Sharia law and and the Human Rights Act However, I think it's important to bear in mind what he says here. He says that the Convention has exposed state conduct to judicial scrutiny in areas that would previously have been held non-justiciable, which is where the political controversy has arisen. And even as I write this, we've been having a debate in the last week or so when Michael Gove has raised specific points about the fact that the judges are getting a much more higher profile since the Supreme Court had to decide upon uh, whether Article 50 
could be triggered by a government decision or whether Parliament had to have a debate. Well, they're having a debate whilst I record this and we will know the outcome shortly. But you can see that the whole temperature, uh, the, certainly the judicial temperature, has been raised. And it's not going to go down. We have to face reality. But to compound matters, globalisation has produced a plethora of international conventions and supranational bodies. Something we have to deal with. And that's been, they have to be the subject to consideration by both English and European courts, at least for the moment. We don't know what the full effect will be of what is now called the Court of the European Union or the old European Court. We, we don't quite know where we're going to be with that, but clearly the, their jurisdiction is going to diminish. That will be part of withdrawal from the EU. Uh, obviously, the Convention Court, the European Court of Human Rights, is a, a separate court, which some people get confused with, and that will be looked at, I think, separately by uh, this current government, the Conservative government, come the 2020 election, when that will probably be a main plank, because it may well lead to a commitment to withdraw, certainly from the Convention in its current form, with a view to looking at a new sort form of European Convention on Human Rights. But that may well have to take account of the UN Convention as well, bearing in mind what the, the man in America, Mr Trump, is up to with his own policies, and, and the effect that that's going to have globally. So, therefore, to, to at least give you some picture of this, in addition, diplomatic and sovereign immunity have become increasingly circumscribed by courts concerned to prevent their abuse. That's according to Phillips, and of course he's uh, right to uh, say that. Let me um, finish my comments by saying that the author gives us enough detail here in this quick a public international law review to remind us what is at stake so that the contents couple legal information with historic interest. And generously, uh, Qureshi has donated all his royalties to the Bar Benevolent Fund, and I'd like to thank him very much for that. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I think these books are important, you should know about them. Publication date is 2016, and I'm recording this at the beginning of 2017. Let's just have a quick look at the book again. There it is. Green cover, paperback side and then the back, the picture of Mr Qureshi there. And then just opening it up in the middle, I said the shady there is a very helpful. You can find things quite quickly. There's no index as such, but what you're really looking for here. As I said, there is some footnoting, and that's really when he brings the case law in. And he's looking specifically at some of the points. But looking at the, um, the basic content of this uh, book, you can see there's, there's quite a substantial reference to judicial uh, thinking. For instance, Lord Phillips does take quite a large amount of, of uh, referencing for himself, quite rightly too, I would suggest. Um, again, you've got a whole range of interesting uh, points, and I think it's important just to bear in mind the, the basic content of the book itself. It's the introduction, and we look at the UN Charter and so on, and then the treaty interpretation, and then a whole range of acts of state, diplomatic privileges, public interest immunity is also covered. Uh, again, quite a controversial area. Um, but I think this is a very good book. Uh, as I said before, I'd like to thank the publishers very much for, for producing it as the series, and also, of course, to the author and his uh, assistants for an excellent uh, new title on the market. Thank you. Bye-bye.